All right, so we ready to, to dive in? Sure, why not? All right, so let's do it. Um, today, we are going to be talking about how to automate your contacts and follow-up. Um, and I, I'll, like, whisper it and say, leads, we really mean leads. Um, but uh, whatever, for whatever reason, Facebook doesn't like showing posts with that word, so we are keeping it to things like contacts or business or other words that we're using in a lot of the content that we're doing. But really what we're talking about today is figuring out um, how to automate a lot of what you do when it comes to uh, first generating new business, generating leads, uh, and then how to follow up and set up some automations to be able to follow up with them in different ways. We're going to just cover a bunch of different options that are out there and available, um, and maybe some things you haven't thought of in terms of ways to automate what you're doing. Uh, as always, I do want to mention that this is brought to you by two groups, um, the Real Estate Technology Institute and Service for Life. Uh, the Real Estate Technology Institute, Craig is a founder. I'm also uh, an instructor over there as well. And basically, if you're interested in anything to do with uh, learning about technology or increasing uh, the technology or marketing in your business, definitely check out reti.us. Um, memberships are really, really reasonable. And in fact, you might even have a membership from an association out there because there are associations who brought it on as member benefits. So definitely check out with your association if, if it's something uh, that you might already have access to. Beyond that, we're going to talk um, about Service for Life. This is my organization. Um, and if you are interested in, uh, well, basically getting 100% repeat and referral business, getting to that point in your career where you're not chasing leads all the time, um, but consistently getting business to come to you. That is what we do with Service for Life. And it has successfully been working for agents for, well, over 20 years at this point. So I'm lucky to uh, run such a great group. If you're interested in that, and that, that kind of business sounds good to you, check out serviceforlife.com. Again, that's serviceforlife.com. So thank you to everybody for joining today. We are going to dive right in um, to talk about automating your contacts and your follow up. And Craig, there are a number of different types of automations that we're going to talk about today and then some tools that you can use within those. Um, but anything you want to mention before we dive in? Um, just that, I mean, anything that you can automate saves you time and money. That's the big thing at the end of the day is, you know, instead of having to manually do a task or remember to do things and possibly forget to do things, if it's automated, it's on autopilot, which means, again, it saves you time and money. Absolutely. And it's, you know, I, I always find that's one of the toughest things to do is to juggle plates, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about juggling all these different plates in our business. And if that's something that you feel like, you are in that situation. I know a lot of us feel like we're in that situation where we're juggling all these different plates and wearing 12 different hats and all that sort of stuff. Um, automations really let you sort of put down one of those plates and you don't have to juggle it all the time and, and you can sort of take off one of those hats or maybe not wear it all the time um, and only put it on once a month as opposed to having to put it on every day or every week. Um, you can really sort of take those things and that type of work off your plate. So if you feel like you're in that situation, um, this might be sort of the perfect webinar and the perfect thing that we're going to cover today is sort of the types of tasks you can automate and then some of the tools that we use to do so. All right, so let's dive in. Um, Craig, do you want to cover the different types of tasks? Sure, absolutely. So... First of all, again, we're going to go through these as we go, but first we're going to spend a good amount of time talking about drip campaigns, which can be uh, email, text, uh, even phone call. Uh, but having a set campaign of content that can go out on a schedule, uh, really depending on who that person is and what kind of a contact they are, is a huge thing. And drip campaigns have been around forever. But there are some newer twists or innovations that have come out the last couple of years you might not know about or be using. Uh, we're also going to talk about automating the process of getting reviews. And we talk about it all the time how important reviews are these days with today's consumer. Um, so if you can just have it on a schedule or automatically those requests are going out, again, another bonus. Uh, social media. And by the way, we put a little question mark there because we're going to talk about it. There are certain things you do and don't want to consider automating when it comes to social media, but there are some tools and tricks you can do there. Uh, and then 
retargeting ads, um, which we'll teach you what a retargeting ad is when we get there. Uh, but the bottom line is, if somebody ever goes to your website, they're technically a hot lead. Uh, and you might want to automatically start following that person around. Um, so we're going to teach you how to do that. And then we kind of put in a, everything else, which is kind of like a catch all category with some other things you may not know about that you could be automating. Absolutely. You know, one thing I'll mention too, Craig, um, is that each of these topics, we have some stuff that's a little bit more in depth on. So for example, mm -hmm. reviews, we just covered that recently. Um, the replay is going to be available. So check that one out. It's a workshop we did last week. Um, uh, social media, we've covered that in the past and talked a little bit about automations within that. So definitely check those out. There's a whole series here that we've done this year uh, on basically three weeks out of a month that we're doing these. And I just want to mention and make sure that you know that we have more in-depth stuff on these topics. Uh, the replays are on the agentinnercircle.com website. Uh, they're here in the group as well as if you're an RETI member, they are over there as well. Um, within that content. So you can get them in a few different places, uh, depending on where you have memberships or agent inner circle is free and you don't even need a membership. You can check them out there as well. So I just wanted to kind of throw in that side note um, and great, great points there, Craig. Um, there are so many different ways to sort of automate things in your business and set things up. Um, let's dive on in and sort of talk about some of the first ones and a big picture thing and something that most folks can already do and do very easily um, inside of their business, which is drip campaigns. Now, I know this is something you cover in a lot more depth uh, in some of the courses that you do. Do you want to uh, dive into this one? Sure. I mean, basically, if you kind of really sit down and look at your entire database, if you're using a CRM or any kind of contact manager, you might over the years rack up hundreds, if not thousands of people in your database. Uh, and if they're just sitting there stale, like you're not doing anything to follow up with those people or stay in contact with them, they're useless. So there's got to be some continuous uh, touch points and communications with every person in your database. And that's where drip campaign campaigns really come in. So in other words, you can create different campaigns for different reasons. Um, with different kind of content going out to that person based on who they are. So for example, um, and this is something I always say you might want to go through and do like a one time, like if you haven't done this before, one time huge organizational project where you just go through every contact in your system and start qualifying who they are. Are they, for example, on the buyer side, are they a hot lead, like one that just came in, they're actively looking for property and you know they're looking for property right now. So we kind of gave you an example of like within 60 days, they're wanting to make that purchase. Well, you might want to have a wholly different uh, drip campaign of content going to that person versus another lead who says, oh, I'm just kind of kicking tires. I'm not that serious yet. You know, I'm in that early research. I'm probably either six months out or I'm really kicking tires and I'm a year out from doing anything, right? So different kinds of content you would want to send to different people based on who they are. And what I'm calling looky lose is somebody who you they don't seem serious at all. I mean, they're just playing around. They're like, you know, they're not serious or ready to go. And to kind of give you an example, you could set up an ad campaign or uh, sorry, not an ad campaign, a drip campaign uh, based on, for example, if somebody's in year one for all those different uh, groups, the hot, the warm, the cold and the looky lose. So if somebody's in that first year, Right. And that's this is like after the transaction, you can set up a campaign that goes out to them saying, hey, how's it going with the move? Uh, is there anything I can help you with? You can set up another um, message to go out to them, maybe really close to the transaction, say, hey, can you help me out and give me a review? Go give me a review out on Zillow, out on Facebook or Google, whatever sites you're preferring. Um, how about if I'm new, if especially on the buyer side? and I'm moving to that area, maybe you set up some message going out to them, giving them some helpful information to get acquainted with the community, right? Get to know our area. Um, also, if they're new to the area, maybe offer them some introductions. Hey, is there anyone I can connect you with? I know you have kids. Do you need to know anyone in the, the sports recreation group in town? Or, you know, is there anything else I can help you kind of get connected in town? It's a big deal of you want to stay in their lives, not just do a real estate transaction. And then the last one here we're showing you is kind of like a just checking in or let's get together, right? You can just say, hey, I just want to see how you're doing. It's been a few months since we last talked. 
why don't we get together for a cup of coffee or maybe we can have a barbecue next weekend together, whatever it might be. So setting these up automatically, the person doesn't know that you have really created a campaign that's going out to all their customers just like this, because the key is you want to take a little bit of time and kind of personalize these messages so they don't sound generic. But this is an example of like drip campaigns you can do in that first year after the transaction. It's awesome. And Craig, did, I know uh, we're going to talk today a lot about not just immediate stuff that you can do, but long-term stuff that you can do. But as people are going through this today, I want everybody to keep something in mind, which is a lot of these automations that we're going to be talking about and these drip sequence, the sequences that we're going to be talking about have to do with the information that you've collected about these contacts. So you've yeah. got to know what the date is of these people actually moving. You've got to know that these people have kids or not, right? You've got to know maybe some of their interests and tag them within such. There are, um, uh, there's a whole bunch more that you can do with automations when you have that information about people and are saving that information appropriately. So as we go through today, any of these automations that you think about and you think, hey, I'd really like to do that. I also want you to think about the information you need to start collecting um, to make sure that you're able to do these things in a long term. Um, and now, between way, add to that really quickly, like Alex and I yeah. did one of these workshops a couple of weeks ago, all about how to really work your sphere of influence. And we talked a lot yeah. in that session about how your most lucrative um, kind of lead you can have is already an existing lead because they're more, they already know you, they're more likely to refer business to you or hire you again. And the cost of trying to drum up a new lead, a fresh lead is way higher. So it's all about, like I was saying, you got to figure out what kind of information you want to collect and you got to put in that time to optimize your CRM or whatever tool you're using for this. Um, so that way you are maximizing your touch points with them. Absolutely. And this is something that really plays into account when we start talking about not just the first year, um, but the long term items. So Craig yeah. mentioned we talked about this in in previous um, in a previous uh, webinar that we did um, here in the group. And we're going to talk about this in terms of your prior clients as well as some of the vendors and other people that you work with, because these drips aren't just for past clients, right? They're going to be for a lot more folks than that. Um, as you can see here, we've got things like birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, or even just checking in consistently um, to see if there's things you can help them. with. Maybe they don't, didn't need an introduction when they first moved in, but six months down the road or a year down the road, they might want that introduction to whoever um, that you might know. So offering those kinds of thing is, things isn't just a short term, but is also a long term strategy that you, you can use consistently. Now, Craig, talk about the vendors for a second here, because people always think about this in terms of past clients, but vendors is, is just a whole nother world that you can open up when it comes to setting up these sort of drip campaigns. Absolutely. I mean, if, when we're, call, we're talking about vendors, that's a lot of different things you can consider. There could be the title people you work with all the time, the mortgage, the, um, the, the landscapers, the pool people, whatever. I mean, if there's a lot of vendors you're consistently interacting with or sending and referring business to, you might want to make sure you're following up with them as well. It's all about adding that personal touch, the happy birthday, the happy anniversaries, you should think of your vendors along the same lines you would think of a previous real estate client. Absolutely. Right? Wanting to always be in front of them as well. Absolutely. All right. So we've talked about um, we've talked about sort of the big picture stuff of what sort of drip campaigns you can do, who to send that sort of content to, and to give you some ideas there. Uh, Craig, are you ready to dive into the actual tools that you know we use and we know a lot of agents that use to do all this from Sort of different facets. Sure. All right, cool. So let's dive into the first one here. Um, we're going to start out by talking a little bit about ad management and ISA because when people think about automations, I think this is what a lot of people immediately think about. Groups out there that will do things like, and, and again, we're covering this first because it goes, automations go way beyond this, but we at least want to give you the basis. Um, most people think about it in terms of ads right, or online landing pages that capture leads, 
and then some sort of automation that follows up with them to some extent to get them to turn into a client. Now, many of these are turning cold leads into clients. And Craig and I talked a lot about how uh, that might not be your best option all the time, but it is part of the market. So somebody needs to be out there and doing it. Um, and if it is something that you're interested in doing and interested in working as part of your business, there are a few different groups that do a pretty good job when it comes to managing ads, setting all that up for you, and then running some sort of follow-up campaign uh, or allowing you to run some sort of follow-up campaign in regards to that. Um, yeah. I know. Let's quickly define what an ISA is, just in case sure. people don't know. Um, think of it as a call center um, where they're going to answer the phone if you can't answer the phone fast enough, or they'll interactively chat or text with somebody if you're not available to do so. So right. these three companies, Verse, Call Action, and Bold Leads, kind of give you the soup to nuts. There's a lot of companies out there that say, we'll help you set up an ad campaign uh, and we'll manage the ads for you. But these companies go that step further and will respond immediately. Because we talk about all the time how speed of response is one of the major determiners of gaining business these days. You take too long to get back to somebody, they've already moved on, maybe talked to another realtor. But if somebody's immediately communicating with them, that's a different story. Yep, absolutely. Now, Craig, one thing I'd want to mention, just so folks know, the acronym ISA is Inside Sales Agent. And essentially what that means um, in a bigger picture sense is that it's somebody who is going to do all the work to get somebody from being a cold lead to the point that, say, maybe they're making an appointment with you or they're having a qualified conversation to some extent where you already know what they're interested in. It's not just somebody random off the internet. Um, they do that sort of midpoint nurturing between the two. Now, these are three different groups that um, have options for that, that either do it for you or let you set up automations to do this. Um, any Real like positives, negatives, things that you you know know specifically about any of the ones that were shown here, Craig. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not from a positive standpoint. I've talked to a lot of editors who use all three of these companies with very positive, happy results. Yep. Um, the the only thing that I always kind of uh, just guide people on just a teeny bit is even though this sounds amazing, it's turnkey. You still, no matter what you set up with, you still should do your due diligence at the beginning and make sure they understand your business and how you operate. That mm -hmm. way, it's not just a call center, like that inside agent, just pitching generic stuff. You want them to understand your market and your business. Absolutely. The other thing I always mention to people with this, Craig, and again, just to reiterate, all of those groups are, are delivering at some level. Now, some of the automations you can set up are, can be with warmer leads, but at the core, a lot of these are generating cold leads. And no matter how much somebody qualifies a cold lead, it's still a cold lead, um, no matter you know how you slice it. Uh, so it's you just got to keep that in mind because I, there are a lot of people who complain about like you know oh I got this lead and it's terrible, and they're they're expecting that like it should be a lead that's served up on a silver platter ready to sign a contract. When the reality is, even with an ISA, you're still going to have to do some work to get them from the point of, you know, thinking about working with somebody to actually working with you. There's still a gap there um, that I think a lot of people maybe don't have that expectation going into working with companies like that. So just something to keep in mind. So let's go a step further though, Craig, because beyond just this, like, you know, somebody generating a lead, automating it, getting it into an ISA for you, um, I think there's sort of a next step further in terms of the long-term follow-up um, or even sort of the mid-range follow-up that's going on out there. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll give the shameless plug, uh, but there are two groups that do this really, really well. Um, one is Happy Grasshopper and the other is, uh, it's brought to you by, um, <laughs> but Service for Life, uh, but they do different things. So there's a little, tiny bit of overlap, but they really do different things for you. And we'll cover both of those because they both do personalized messages that are written for you. Happy Grasshopper tends to be more of the short form version of that. So if you're looking for things like um, a personalized card, an email, a short text message, uh, a social media post, things like that, 
that's really where they shine. They stand out is that short form, um, shorter set content that they're going to do for you, send it out to people. And that's whether it's digital or mail, print mail. Service for Life and, is... Oh, sorry, go ahead, yeah, Craig. Yeah, I'm happy guys have a real quick. What they kind of do, they have it, their whole... I don't want to say their whole. The, the core of that business is that they have a team of writers that are prepare content for you. And what they do is they first interview you, the real estate pro, and they get to know you, get to know your personality, your likes and interests. That way they can write these different communications in your personality and style. So... That's what they're, and, you know, whether it's, uh, like Alex mentioned, whether it's email marketing, social media posts, whatever, but they try to make their communications more personal and also topical. So they'll find like an article online from the morning, uh, from that day of something you're personally interested in or that they know the customer's interested in, and then they'll kind of write a more personalized message trying to get better response. So that's kind of what they Happy Grasshopper does in a nutshell. Yep. Great, great explanation, Craig. Absolutely great explanation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the Service for Life side, again, it is a team of writers. It is all uh, fresh written content on a monthly basis. And this is more the um, new personalized newsletter style content, longer form. Things like sales letters, reports, um, much longer form content that you can use to generate business, to follow up with your existing clients, fear of influence, all that sort of stuff. So um, they're both very good at being personalized, setting it up so that people feel like mm -hmm. it's coming from you directly. And uh, it's just like I said, it's a shorter form content, a little bit longer form content, very similar in terms of what it does for you. Um, now you can use and very, similar, and very similar performance, by the way. It's not like just because uh, service of life are longer form, they don't perform as well. The metrics are very similar across both of them. So it's really just which style you like, right? Absolutely. Um, Yep. So, and we'll mention it. It's like we said, it's what style that you like. If you like sending something that's much shorter, a little bit longer. Um, the nice part about sending longer form content is that you have much more opportunity to do what we call referral programming, which is setting up situations where people are more likely to send you business um, or, you know, refer you business or send you their own business um, repeatedly. So, we tend to, to like long form content and what we do, and uh, it works really well. It's worked very well for agents for years. But that being said, short form content can work as well. And there are a number of companies out there, even beyond Happy Grasshopper, that do that. Um, I, I don't know, Craig, you, I think you have a little bit more experience with these guys than I do. Send out cards? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we're moving out of the, you know, the, the email, the newsletter that we just talked about. Send out cards is more um, about you want to send a, a personalized postcard. So they have, um, and, and by the way, this also ties into a very easy to use mobile app. So you could be at a property meeting with a property owner about uh, taking on their listing. And before you even leave in their driveway, you could be quickly ordering a personalized postcard to be sent to that person a day or two later. Um, so you could either use this on a per instance basis, such as that listing appointment you just did, uh, but they also have um, like uh, packages you can purchase where you're getting like automations as well. So for example, if you have someone in your system and you have their birth dates, you have their anniversary dates, stuff like that, you can send them automatically postcards for those big events or for holidays, things like that. So again, you could use it on a one-time per instance basis or you could uh, set up these automated schedules that send out postcards to your sphere. Absolutely. Now, there are other, some other companies that do this as well. Um, I know Prospects Plus does this. Uh, I'm trying to think of... Yep. Um, uh, the other one uh, that I have there is, uh, is it Postcard Mania? I think I it's Postcard Mania. Yeah, they're another one. I haven't used them that before okay. and really heard a ton. Um, about them, but there are a number of companies out there that do similar things when it comes to uh, automating and sending out content as a follow-up media to your sphere of influence or to the people that you're inputting in there. So I think we've covered the sort of follow-up game in some depth about some great companies that we've seen agents use with a lot of success. Um, the next category we have, though, is 
use a review CRM and how to actually use some automations to get reviews. Now, I covered reviews in a lot of depth. Uh, Craig and I both did. I know this is a course that I do um, and done for years. But Craig, do you want to talk about the automations a little bit and, and what people use to automate this? Sure. I mean, think of these as CRMs um, that are their main purpose to help you get more reviews out on the internet, such as on Google My Business, on Facebook, on Yelp, on Zillow, Realtor.com, and so on. Um, so you can pick any of these three companies, either Reach 150, Real Satisfied, or Testimonial Shoe. Those are the three biggest. Um, and you load your, your database, your customers into there. And then it would help you by sending out emails without you having to worry about it, kind of like on these drip schedules, asking your customers for reviews on different sites. And the key is what they really do is they build into those emails that are going out the links to make it very easy for your customer to go give those reviews. Not where, hey, go figure it out yourself. Click here to go give me the review on Google. Click here to go give me the review on LinkedIn and so on. So it really is a smart thing to use. And then the other good thing that it does is if any of your customers create these reviews, it then creates like a, like a feed of all the reviews you have on all the sites that you then can put on your website or in different places. Absolutely. Those are all great solutions. Um, all three of those Craig has listed there. Uh, all just fantastic solutions in terms of ways to automate that. And you are going to see more and more over the coming years about how important reviews are um, and yep. reviews are in your business. And I would really pay attention to these because they might not feel uh, the of the utmost importance right now, but I promise you they will be. Um, and for everybody scoffing at me, I I remind them of QR codes, which is hilarious to me at this point, Craig. <laughs> uh, crazy, crazy enough, I'm, you're, you're kind of seeing a comeback with it. You're starting oh, to get them more again. I'm it's like, everywhere. Why? Dude, they're, they're everywhere now. Because people figured out, because yeah. the next generation figured out how to use them and how easy they are and how people use them in everywhere in the rest of the world. And it was just the like, U.S. not doing it. Um, and everyone was like, wow, contactless. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Yep. And, uh, you know what I think it really was though? The hmm. fact that the default camera now scans them. Yeah. Like, you used to have, have to have separate apps to scan the QR codes when they first came out. Yep. Now your normal camera does it. So absolutely. I think, I think that's part of it too. You're totally right. All right. So let's dive into the next one, which is certainly not a trend. Um, but is something that, uh, Craig and I are going to talk a little bit about here, uh, and we'll be, I'll say a tiny bit controversial, but not really. Um, I, a, a lot of what people talk about in terms of automations are what you can do with social media, whether that's posting the same content to Facebook and then posting it to Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and all the different places at once, um, or, uh, getting other groups to post for you and automate posts for you. And honestly, my recommendation is to not do either of those things. Um, it's, and, and we'll talk a little bit about why. So first of which, uh, all of the different platforms are a little bit different when it comes to um, how you post on social media. So the, when we covered this in a, a previous workshop, but the demographics of who you're posting to are different. The uh, types of content that work well are drastically different. Now, there are some things that overlap a little bit between these, but the reality is, is that the content that you're putting out is very specialized and specific for the medium and for the place that you're putting it out on. So trying to... Or, hope it like, should be. Should be. Key. Yes. Um, so trying to use content on different play in different places um, usually doesn't work well because, you know, you spend all this extra time to put it somewhere else and then it doesn't really go anywhere because it's not really meant for that platform to begin with. So keep that in mind in terms of um, trying to just take your content and have something that automatically posts it to multiple places for you. The other thing to keep in mind with that is the social networks themselves. Um, from what we've seen, deprioritize content that's coming from outside of their platform. So if an API is posting it, or and what that means is some automated tool, some software that's outside of Facebook, outside of whatever other um, social media network is posting it, 
it is less likely to do well because they want you to actually come into the platform where they can show you ads um, to use that and to post that bit of content. So yeah. By the way, keep that in mind. Stronger word than deprioritize. They penalize them. They do. Oh, they definitely do. They definitely penalize them. Um, and this is nothing that the social networks have reported themselves, but uh, it is study after study after study of various companies have shown this that uh, they really want you coming into the platform, each one of them individually, and posting that content um, if you're really looking for it to do the best that it can. Now, the next thing is getting posting services, some company that is going to post the content for you. Um, I tend to find that you end up with the same content for a lot of people. There are a lot of people sharing the same article, the same you know piece of, of media out there. Um, you don't tend to be able to add a lot of your own flair or personalize things and add that personal touch to it. Uh, and you don't get a lot of control over the content. And we always end up with all of these you know horror stories about somebody posted you know something when some other world event happened. Uh, that was very, very uh, uh, crass or, you know, should can not I, have been Can I give you a on more realistic day. one versus the could a post go out the day of a disaster? Oh, I, I know one. I know ones. I just don't want to bring up specific no, stories because no, no. they're so no, terrible. <laughs> so easy to understand and practical. Yeah, absolutely. I, I live in a base out of Florida, right? And during the winter months, I can go through Florida Realtor like members like social media feeds and know from a mile away which ones are using posting services because they'll have posting like stuff in their feeds about shoveling snow, about, you know, like, um, you know, how to fix up your basement. And I'm like, all right, we never will get snow here and we can't have basements. So I know you're paying somebody to do your social media. So it's yep. not just could a natural disaster happen. Sometimes you just look stupid with some of these posting services. Absolutely, Craig. You're totally right. And um, now, I, this is none of this was to specifically disparage any of the companies we're going to show that do this. Um, this is just one of those things that everybody needs to be very aware of when it comes to using companies to post content for them is that you really can't just set it and forget it. You've got to review some of this yourself. You've still got to keep an eye on it. And yes, there are some companies out there who do a good job of taking some of the weight off of you um, in terms of posting. And uh, I might as well just bring those up here. Um, but when it really comes to that, um, you know, I would mention that you probably don't want people just posting organic traffic for you. Now, when it comes to ad management, that is a totally different story. Um, ad management is absolutely something that's set up to be run and managed by other people if you need to. Um, it is something where, honestly, I would suggest having somebody do that for you. So there's just two different sides of that world. Organic traffic is really, you know, organic posts, the posts that you just put out on your page and you don't pay for. Those are the kinds of things that you really need to keep an eye on and pay attention to. Ad management is definitely something that you can outsource and have people automate and stuff for you, and you're not going to have to do a ton of work um, on a consistent basis to keep up with. Are there anything about any of these specific companies, Craig, that you wanted to mention um, in terms uh, of... No, just, I mean, just that a, a lot of them offer a lot of additional services as well. Some of them will even do your websites. I mean... Um, landing page and stuff like that. I mean, they they do offer a lot of services more than just ad management and posting. Um, but you know, these are at least in our experience the ones that probably are the least generic. If that makes sense, like they're not. Yep. You, you have the, the least amount of troubles of possible bad, weird situations. Absolutely. Now you mentioned something about your website, and it's a perfect segue here because the next thing we'll dive into, Craig, is um, retargeting your website visitors. I know this is mm -hmm. a big automation that a lot of people don't pay attention to, um, yep. but I don't know if you want to explain retargeting to folks. Sure. Well, first thing you got to understand is um, there's a stat that I use all the time to back this up. Only 2% of people register a first visit to a website, only 2%. Um, and once they leave your website, there's zero guarantee they're ever going to come back. They could jump on another realtor's website. They could decide to go to Zillow, whatever. 
But every time you can possibly get someone to come back to your site, the odds of them registering goes up exponentially. So I always say your goal is not to get visits. Your goal is to get repeat visits, right? Um, so what retargeting ad basically is, is you put a little bit of code into your website, which you can get from Google or Facebook very easily. Uh, and then when somebody comes to your site, you drop a little cookie file onto their device. And that allows you to remember that person when they come back for the next visit. And there's a lot of things you can do with that little cookie you put on their device. But one of the key things you could do is tie that cookie into retargeting advertising. In other words, you could say, all right, I know this person's been to my website at one point. If they ever then go to Facebook or Instagram or Google or any of these other locations, show them this advertisement. So it allows you to follow that person around the internet. And now they start seeing you all over the place. And they're kind of like, wow, this realtor's big time. I see them all over. And hopefully eventually they're going to click and go back to your website from one of those ads. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great explanation there, Greg. And it's uh, basically, you know, those ads that follow you around the internet, you go search for shoes and all of a sudden you're seeing shoe advertisements everywhere. That's what we're talking about with retargeting. So you yeah. want to use that power yourself um, and follow people around the internet. So it's a great way to do that and a great way to automate your advertising with people that are already more likely to work with. You. All right. So we've yeah, covered the, the big thing with retargeting ads also. If you're a typical realtor with just a average traffic website, you're not getting a ton of traffic on a daily basis. You uh, retargeting advertising is a very low cost on a per user basis, very low. I mean, you could just put a hundred dollars in a budget in Google or Facebook. And that hundred dollars might last you a couple months unless yep. you have a lot of traffic. Right. Yeah, absolutely, Craig. The the retargeting systems are really, really great. Um, definitely something to, to use. All right, so we've covered sort of the general categories of things that we use consistently for automating uh, everything from leads all the way to following up with them and retargeting them uh, and making sure that, that they end up converting and working with you. But there are two things that we're going to cover in a little more depth, and we'll call that everything else, which is um, first thing we want to mention is to what we call automate across systems. So a lot of the things we talked about today are things where you say have a, a drip over here and you have Facebook ads over here and you have, you know, your, your uh, CRM over here and all the different tools that we've talked about. Z uh, Zapier and IFTTT or if this, then that are two systems that allow you to get a lot of your tools to talk to one another so that you're not having to do a whole bunch of work to get information from one system over into another or to get one thing to trigger an action from another system. So keep in mind, anytime that you are looking at like, oh, I need to upload a list of contacts or I need to add a contact into this other system after that, I, after I've already gotten it, see if you can replace that action specifically with either Zapier or IFTTT. If you go to either of the sites, um, zapier.com or ifttt.com you can see all of the tools that they integrate with and they are both in the thousands at this point so definitely check out all the different automations that you can set up um and there are oh my there are a ton um we do everything from automate things in our house to you know follow up with contacts and audiences um so if you're interested in uh some of our favorite zaps let us know in comments um, that's something I always love to send people are some of my favorite zaps that agents can use. Uh, that's a topic I did years ago, five or six years ago, actually was, you know, the top 10 zaps for real estate agents, um, which was a fun one. We might, we might bring that one. Back. Anything else yeah. to add to those, Craig? Uh, no, I mean, I think that's, I mean, the, the crazy part is, and if you just spend a little bit of time on Zappy or IFTT, you'll see. When we're talking about there's thousands of these automation scripts, you can just say, all right, I have a Gmail account. Show me every possible automation I can do with Gmail. I have, you know, I use Outlook. Show me every possible automation I can do with Outlook. Or if you want to make where every time you add someone to your spreadsheet, something happens. I mean, it's crazy how many automations are already in there. Yep. So they give you a couple for free. And then if you become, if you want to go beyond that, they become paid systems. Uh, but they really do help you automate just about anything in your life. They really absolutely. Do. They absolutely do. Um, they're really, really huge with that. Um, ah, you know what, Craig? I just realized we forgot one. 
What's that? Uh, in general, Calendly. We forgot calendar oh, automations. Yeah. Like as a category, oh my! All right, so we forgot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we forgot uh, one more that I'm going to mention here is a, a thing called Calendly. Um, if you're interested in getting people to just book time with you, it automate it automatically sets up, works with your calendar. Will show people the time that you have available and let them book time with you um, directly, along with a whole bunch of other automations with this. So we got to add this to this uh, presentation, Craig. I don't know. We we must have missed that one. Um, all right. Now, um, last but not least, um, we'll talk about the, the last thing you can automate, which is pretty much of everything. And we'll say, um, I know you like to say, take advantage of the gig economy. Do you want to explain that a bit, Craig? Yeah. I mean, basically, um, the gig economy is, if you ever use an Uber or Lyft, that's what gig economy is. There's a lot of people that are out there that'll, you can pay small amounts of money to do little one-time jobs or tasks for you. Uh, and in the real estate, in the marketing world in general, there's a ton of gig economy, such as sites like Fiverr or Upwork or 99designs. Um, outside of that, there's uh, sites like TaskRabbit, where you could say, I want to hire someone to go around town picking up my yard signs or checking all my units. Like you could do these app for like actual chores or tasks. Uh, but if you just are looking to get things off your plate, it's not like these are automated, but you could just say, I'll pay someone 10 bucks to do this instead of me having to do it. Absolutely. And that's definitely something to always keep in mind um, is what you outsource, what you automate, and what you can keep doing yourself. Craig and I always talk about this with uh, different topics. I think video is one of the really interesting ones because um, I think one of the biggest sort of uh, detrimental factors to video, aside from people just being afraid to get on camera, is that it's something that takes time that you actually have to do that you can't outsource somebody else being in front of the camera for you. Um, where in a lot of other tasks in the industry, that is something that, that you know there are things that you can outsource and get other people to do uh, and pay people to do for you. So always keep in mind the things that you can do that you should do yourself, as opposed to the things that you can outsource and can get other people um, to do for you. So. Uh, all, all great ways to save you time, save you money, and, well, make you more productive. Oh, I, I just thought of another one we forgot. Um, What's that? We're going to kick ourselves. But we covered this a couple of weeks ago in our, uh, our whole Google um, classes. But setting up things like um, uh, draft, not drafts, template emails and stuff mm -hmm. like that that you can just have ready to go. Like, you know, yep. creating All the filters. macros. Like all those tricks we taught in the Google workshop, you could definitely apply for automations or time savers. Absolutely. Well, you know, Craig, it's tough fitting, uh, you know, all of this into what's supposed to be a 30 minute presentation that always goes 45. So, you know, true. true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, are there any questions from anybody before we close down today? Um, I'm going to open it up for questions and then I'm going to just mention one more time that all of this is brought to you by two groups, the Real Estate Technology Institute and Service for Life. Um, RETI, if you're interested in learning anything when it comes to technology or marketing in your business, check out reti.us. Uh, memberships over there are really, really reasonable, so check that out. Uh, as well as if you are interested in creating a 100% repeat and referral business, um, check out serviceforlife.com. We've, doing, we've been doing it for agents for 20 plus years, helping agents get to a point where you don't feel like you're chasing leads constantly, um, but you are consistently able to follow up with clients and, and we call program referrals. Make sure you get referrals. Consistent. Thanks for putting those links into chat. If you are interested in either of those, uh, check out reti.us or serviceforlife.com. Uh, both of those are in chat uh, as well. All right. Anything else, Craig, before we close down today? Uh, I think we covered probably more than we always, we always go do more than we say we're going to do. So I think. It's so true. <laughs> it's so true. We always do. That's all right, though. Hey, over, uh, what is it? Over deliver? Under promise, over deliver, as they say. That is us every time. That is us for sure. All right. Well, thank you to everybody for joining today. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, uh, as always, uh, best wishes for your success. And thank you from Craig and myself. Have a wonderful week, everybody.